Dude, that took five seconds. Uh, this feels like a really big walleye. Holy smokes. Oh my gosh, we might be onto something here, dude. Oh, this is not easy solo. Look at that fish. Oh my gosh. Okay, wait till you see this rig. Of course, wait till you see the fish, I guess. So 10 seconds in to this new rig I'm trying, and literally I just closed my bail and that thing was on it. We were fishing for sturgeon, and kept having walleyes pecking at the sturgeon rig, and we hooked up with a couple of them and they were nicer fish. Pitching jigs with frozen salties, we just caught a couple dinks, and it's like, what can we do differently? So, I rigged up a small sturgeon rig, and basically a sturgeon rig is a lindy rig, right? I found the smallest sturgeon weight I had, a little two ouncer, short lead, might be a little long because the current's ripping pretty good. I want it tight to bottom. And I just did this, I think it's like a one aught hook that I use for uh, creek chubs in the fall. And I put a little gob of uh, crawlers on there and a chunk of cut sucker. And I'm not even kidding, it was like five or 10 seconds of casting that thing out and that wall I smoked it. So we might be onto something here. 10 seconds. Yeah, that was sick. Oh my I God. I couldn't even believe it, I thought you were lying. No, and I knew it was a good one because instantly it was just those big head shakes yeah. in the current. Wow. Holy cow. So I realize this is a bit of a disaster right now, our workstation, but we were kind of frantic on that first fish catch. So what we were doing is we pulled up to this spot and we grabbed some sturgeon. We grabbed walleyes off this weed edge too, but we're like, let's see if we can smoke a big sturgeon first. So we're using, you know, the big five, six aught circle hooks loaded up with scent. And right off the bat, Nick catches a couple of nice walleyes, and every time that bait's back there, he's getting these ticks that it kind of looks like a sturgeon, but it's just little walleyes pecking at his bait. So it's like, okay, I pick up the jig, pitching around, I caught a couple fish, but not those big ones. And it's like, what could we do differently? Well, we made a little hybrid sturgeon rig that's smaller, because basically a sturgeon rig is a lindy rig, right? Beefed up for bigger presentations and current. I dug in my sturgeon box, found the smallest components I had. This is like a one aught hook that I would use for big creek chubs in the fall, and a little two ounce weight. The current is ripping, but we're on this little, uh, this little back side of this point that comes out where the current breaks and it slows down, right up on this weed edge where it goes from five to ten feet and there's a wall that those fish are cruising. And I loaded this up just like a mini sturgeon rig, and I'm not even kidding, it was like ten seconds back in that wall I smoked it. So it's just throwing as much junk on here as possible, like your sturgeon fishing. Good old salty. We got a crawler somewhere around here. And I'm just gobbing it up, and the whole thing is sent in this dirty water and current. And you just want to make sure, this isn't a huge hook, so I want to make sure I got enough uh, hook exposed that a fish can get pinned. If you put too much on there, we'll miss them every time and just a, a short lead because of that current to keep the bait fairly close to the bottom, not like a traditional Lindy rig in the fall where you got six, seven feet and you're pulling creek chubs. And uh, man, I'm telling you, it was like that. So I cannot wait to soak this a little bit longer. Gonna get some funny looks from guys that are jigging shiners if we pull up <laughs> doing this and start smoking them. Oh my. But with how many fish are pecking at that sturgeon rig, and you throw a jig back in there and you get one tenth as many bites, it's like, I don't know if it's just that gob of scent or it's something different because they've seen a zillion frozen shiners just hung and dangled right in front of their face or what, but I have a feeling it won't take too much longer and we'll, uh oh, <laughs> I thought that was already it. Now I'm all trigger happy here. Oh man. Well, let's soak it for a little bit and see what happens. Rod's loading up right now. Those little circle hooks, you don't even gotta set them. That was maybe a minute, just long enough that we shut the camera off before it was like, tick, 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 here we go. I don't think it's as big as the last one, but it's definitely not the little eater size fish that we're catching when we're pitching around a jig. 
He wants to go to this other side. Not as big as the other one, but still a quality fish. And I'm, it's just instant. And there's nobody around. And even if there was, nobody's doing this. Don't tell anybody about it. Uh, we'll wait and post this once we're long gone. <laughs> about three hours south. Just another quality fish. Just like that, dude. I'm so pumped. <laughs> this is gonna be a heck of a day. We got another one going on the cheater rig, Brad. The cheater rig. I'll try to throw in the one-handed assist here. Well, I made you net your own earlier. Look how close we are to this weed line. It's like we're pitching for bass with cheater rigs. I could probably do this anywhere, though. Dude. Ooh, what's going on here? Thank you, sir. We gotta figure out a way to catch smaller fish so we can eat tonight. <laughs> yeah. I know, I think this one might be... <laughs> a little too hefty. Definitely too portly. Yes. Dude, another good one on the cheater egg. Sweet. What is up with his head? Hey, he's got issues. Probably. It's not a giant, but probably too big to eat for dinner tonight. <laughs> you better believe we're going to have a fish fry. Oh, that's what I get for getting all cocky. You did say big in. Oh, big in, dude. Dude. It's a big one, big one. Seth Fighter would be so disappointed that I'm fishing with a cheater rig right now and throwing up llamas. Oh, I'm sorry, Seth. We'll pitch plastics later. So it's fall river run. We're on the rainy river. Emerald shiners are pushing up in. I'll show you a little clip right here of the shiners at the end of the dock at night. We're staying at Ballard's Resort. Uh, probably gonna do a nice little fish fry later. But what we're fishing right now is the, the currents, the currents really move in, the water's up compared to a traditional fall. So like water temps are mid 40s, dropping fast. A lot of the times you would find fish going into deeper holes once it starts getting down to that 40 degree temp. But this quicker current has got these fish moved up to try to find some slacker water. So what we're fishing is, these, this is the inside of a bend where that current is pushing and sweeping up against that far shoreline. We're over here on the US side where it's a little bit slower in slack water and you can tell we're using two ounce weights instead of having to use five ounce weights to keep baits down over there. So what we're doing is we're setting up right on the edge of this weed edge where it just falls off into a sand bottom and you'll see these random fish cruising along the outside. And what we do is once I mark some fish like that and we stop on that spot, I'll crank my chart speed up to nine or 10. And what that does is it's almost like a real time image. And when we're spot locked in place, when fish are moving through up and down, they'll show up as a streak on side imaging. And when a fish swims through past us, riding along in that current, what I can see is if that fish is say 40 feet to the left. If we start getting two or three coming through off to the left, say out in this no man's land, I'll slide the boat with the spot lock out over those fish. We'll pick up a couple more. And then all of a sudden we'll see marks starting to come through on this right side closer to those weeds. I'll just slide the boat back in and it's a cool way to stay on those fish uh, in one spot but sliding around and getting on more bites. Nice thing about that spot lock too, we've been using it all day, three, four, five hours in the current, never had to grab an anchor. You're a lot less likely to take the time to get wet hands and go pull up an anchor, fire up the big motor and try to move 10 or 20 feet to hit those fish that you can see clear as day are off to the side. So there's nothing new about the rig that we're using today. I don't know, we've been calling it the cheater rig. It's basically just a big beefed up Lindy rig or a mini little sturgeon rig, but man, it's just super effective when you know there's fish there and uh, you find yourself in a unique position like we did today. Anyone, anyone else think this little bugger should maybe have that checked out? <laughs> Just in case? Yikes. I think we'll let that guy go.